Today on Truth, Duty, Valor. Inside the Jets. Under the canopies. Behind the masks. Behind the scenes with Canada's top pilots and technicians. And the making of one of North America's favorite pastimes. The Comox Valley, a majestic blend of snow-peaked mountains and glassy water. And if it's springtime, you might catch a glimpse of some jets. Although from a distance, they look like a flock of birds. When they get closer, there's no mistaking their identity. Gracing air shows across North America, blazing through the skies at speeds up to 600 kilometers an hour. They are Canadian icons. They are the Snowbirds. The Snowbirds are far from their home in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. Being away from home is something this team has to get used to. Every year, they spend six months traveling the skies above North America, performing for millions of people. Their show is made up of 50 maneuvers. All must be flown with precision. Putting on this type of show takes a lot of hard work, endless practice, great skill. Before the team presents the show to the public, they spend six months at home learning their routine. Four three one Air Demonstration Squadron is home of the Snowbirds. Approximately 80 Canadian Forces personnel make up the squadron, but only 24 comprise the show team. Every year, the show is different. Every year, they start from scratch. The six-month training period in Moose Jaw is intense. Major Rob Mitchell is leading this year's team. He's a former F-18 fighter pilot and a third-generation military pilot. It is very intense. In fact, because we do switch over approximately a third of the team every year, three of the nine pilots every year, we have to start over right at the very basics. Uh, and we, we adopt a building block approach where we start with just a couple airplanes and we have them doubled up so the experienced pilots flying in the same cockpit as the new pilots and showing the tricks. Snowbird pilots undergo a rigorous series of tryouts. One of the most sought after professions in the Canadian Forces is being a pilot. Few make the grade. Even fewer will wear the coveted red flight suit of the Snowbird pilot. The team builds their show over the prairies. To prepare for air shows across the country, they need to practice over other types of landscape. Captain Mike French 
is in his third year with the team. We'll fly this year anywhere from sea level in Halifax and, and Victoria, or and, and Comox, to uh, in Oreno where it's 4,500 feet above sea level and, and the air is a lot thinner, the airplanes don't perform as well. And uh, it'll be anywhere from, you know, uh, cold like it is today to, uh, you know, up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. For their last two weeks of training, the team heads to the most difficult type of terrain for aerobatic flying. Over Comox, British Columbia. Here they fly over glassy water. A high-risk environment where it's easy to lose your bearings. It is uh, significantly more challenging. Flying over the, the land, you get quite a bit of visual cues and you can use those to adjust your, your perception and the depth perception. And in many ways, you're looking visually out the window and with your eyes, you can see how high you are off the ground when you're coming out of the bottom of a loop, for example. And over the water, you don't have those cues at all. Comox is the team's last training stop before their six-month tour across North America. The technicians work up to 10 hours on the jets every day. It's critical that the jets are in perfect condition. Being a snowbird technician requires the highest degree of maintenance expertise. The snowbirds fly the CT-114 Tudor. Keeping the jets in top condition during the show season is challenging. Master Corporal Tim Collis is the deputy crew chief for the snowbirds. He's been on the team for three years. He knows the challenges of doing jet maintenance while on the road. It's a lot different uh, coming to Comox as opposed to working at home base. At home base, we've basically got uh, we've got 50 more technicians at home to support us. We've got a maintenance section there that does the overhauls on the tutors. We've got an engine bay there to provide us with engines. So when we come on the road, we try and pack what we think we'll need into our, uh, our support vehicle that follows us around. And then we pack the jets with specific parts. The month in Comox is intense. The pilots and technical crew prepare for two air shows every day. It's their last chance to iron out any wrinkles before they start the show season. The Snowbirds practice their show twice a day during their intense training period in Comox. This is their final boot camp before they begin their six-month tour across North America. The pilots get ready for their second practice show of the day. At this stage, their show is solid, but it still needs polishing. Before every show, we prepare and uh, we go through an entire briefing. We, we talk about the maneuvers we're going to do and any changes to anything that happened on, on a previous show that we didn't like. Okay. Um, basically what we've got right now is a uh, high show with uh, no seven in there as well. In each one hour briefing, last minute details of the show are discussed. Nose tail work going on. And then Everyone pays razor sharp attention. So I'd like to go through the, uh, the no seven show with you first off. Uh, so there was, there was the low show option, we're not going to brief that, but uh, the high show option, just so you guys are uh, on board with it, the opener, uh, the responsibility for spacing falls to six. With aerobatic flying, there's little room for error. Captain Mike French is snowbird number seven and the team's training officer. And that should be it, just note for the taxi. In. For him, being selected to fly with the snowbirds is a childhood dream. I'm from Langley, BC, so just next to Abbotsford, and I grew up going to just about every Abbotsford air show there ever was. And, uh, you know, I watched the Snowbirds since I was three years old. They've, uh, I used to hide under the blankets and cry when they flew, when they flew over because they were too loud. And, uh, you know, from basically since I was three years old, I've, I've wanted to do that job. I've always looked up to the pilots, and so now to be, to be one of them is just a dream come true. Captain Mark Laverdier is new to the team this year. He's a former F-18 fighter pilot. 
he too is living a childhood dream. My father was a private pilot and growing up as a young boy, I used to fly with him on weekends and uh, took me to my first air show at the c &E when I was about six years old, saw the slumbers fly, I knew right away that I wanted to be a slumber pilot. Mike goes over the most recent show, flown in similar weather conditions. The last high show was flown uh, yesterday uh, afternoon. Uh, it was at Air Force Beach, and it was uh, flown at uh, 300 and, or section 580 feet. They picked their performance to pieces. Uh, Vulcan 9 was initially wide and stretched. And they stack out calls. It's a room of perfectionists and critics. There's a saying uh, that we leave our egos and attitudes at the door when we, when we go into that room, because there's, there's no room for, uh, for me to get, get angry at another pilot, you know, by name or whatever. You know, our goal is all the same, and our goal is to put on the best darn air show we can for the public. Okay, let's go to the high show then, go to the RT. So we will be in Big Diamond, wider than route will be Big Diamond, go. Five. Next, the pilots get into a zone. Running in for the high show, Snowbirds check in. Snowbird two. Before they perform each show, they imprint a perfect version of it in their brains. Reversing. Smoke off, turning right, smoke off. At zero knots. Concord, go, rolling out. It's called visualization. It's a technique used by professional hockey players, Olympic athletes, and astronauts before a mission. One back, using up, Snowbird, split. Now. S and split. And, and now. P and pause. Smoke off. Now. Now. Six in. For the Cobra. Pull now. Now. Pushing smoke off. Now. Right. So we all close our eyes and the boss will say, turn in left. We'll visualize turn in left, turn in right, pulling up, turn it out. And, and we very much are in the zone. It puts us in the zone. The same way uh, a basketball player will visualize uh, shooting free throws and all of a sudden is you know, miraculously his free throws get better during the game. It's the same sort of thing for us, a little pre-game preparation. Go, smoke now. Roll now, turn now. Running in for the dirty roll, contact. Contact. Easing up, roll now. Smoke off now, turn now. Big go. Pull now, smoke off now. Three back. In their minds, they're flying a perfect show. Yep. Running in for the LA combo. Smoke now, two back, one back. Pulling up, powering back. They go through the whole 45 minute show. Rolling out. They compact it into six intense minutes. Powering up, smoke off, now. Solos, turn now. Solos running for the mirror roll, smoke now. Nine, roll now. Pushing, rolling, pushing, roll out now, smoke off now. All right, so not a bad run through. Anything, uh, anything missed? Good, uh, good cadences, I thought, on the splits. Good energy on the splits. So that's good. Let's go to objectives then. For myself today, I want to work on wing drop. I've been dropping a little bit of right wing. At the end of the brief, each points out their area of weakness. They all trust each other to be as good as they can be. Well, yesterday, the coming... Essay on the uh, spacing and changes in good CRM. Eight. Steps and code 360. All right, so the importance of being self-critical while flying is that you don't accept uh, any error whatsoever. Because if you accept any error, and those errors become bigger just from time, and over time, just the, the habit pattern, if you accept errors, then someone could really get hurt in this job. I've already alluded to it. Our main objective today is, uh, is reference the water and the flat water that we're expecting out there. So the team is geared up. Altitudes. This afternoon, they'll fly some of the toughest conditions for an aerobatic pilot over the mesmerizing, dark, calm waters of Comox. Good. I'm ready. Two. Ready. Three. Ready. Four. Ready. Five. Ready. Six. Ready. Seven. Ready. Eight. Ready. Nine. Ready. Let's go. Yeah, so we want to be, if we were just flying on the field. While the pilots contemplate their air show, the techs are focused on the jets. After hours of maintenance, the jets are ready. Trust is high between the pilots and the ground crew. It has to be. On this team, everybody's life is in everybody else's hands. Two wings, 
The engine, I think it's good. Yeah. During the show season, the pilots and techs travel together by jet. So they're a two-seater jet, so there's a pilot and a technician in each plane. And absolutely, once the cockpit's closed, you get that crew concept. And as you fly with your pilot throughout the year, you get very tight with them. And you do a lot of things with your pilot, uh, and they have the utmost faith in you. They, they expect you to go out there and ensure that their, their aircraft is 100% ready to go every time so that they don't have to worry about it. So there's that the trust, the professional trust, and then there's the personal trust. You know, I really uh, gotten to know this person, in my case, flying with the crew chief, uh, Sergeant Schillingford, that I know her as a person and I trust her as a person. There's, and I guess it adds to the professional trust as well. Every afternoon, the team practices over a small beach nearby. The coordinators, Snowbirds 10 and 11, Captain Steve Thompson and Jody McKinnon, are already set up. The Snowbirds have performed for over 120 million spectators, from the Canadian Arctic to Mexico, and from Newfoundland to California. The they are also pilots and travel by jet with the team. Intensive preparation and training. They're the face of the snowbirds on the ground during a show. It's a, definitely exciting for us because we get to hear the stuff that the pilots don't get to hear or the technicians. It's a good feeling though to be out in the middle of the public. You really get, like Steve said, the feedback and everybody, when they ooh and ah, it's right there and you, you know, it's immediate. Although it's just a practice run, fans start to gather. I'm sitting from Salinas, California, and I've been coming out for the past two or three years to watch the snowbird in April, and I think I've seen probably 60 shows. <laughs> the practice show will be challenging. The Straits of Georgia that run beside Comox are notoriously glassy. From the sky, the water looks like a giant mirror, creating a dangerous optical illusion for the pilots. Come on, girl. And now, look straight ahead for the nine twinkling lights of the Canada Goose Formation. And listen in as Major Rob Mitchell calls for the team's check-in. Bring it to high show, so let's check-in. Two, two, three, four, five, six, two, five. Come on now, let's go now. Hey, Captain, you got your check-in now. There are nine jets in the Snowbird's performance. Most have a mirrored position, except the guy at the front. The lead plane, number one. Everyone is riding on him. He has to be predictable. They call him the boss. I'm the, the ringleader, the, the, the one calling the shots in many cases in the air and orchestrating the uh, choreography that we're actually going through in the aerial dis demonstration. A former Snowbird pilot always fills the position of the boss. Six years ago, Rob flew the number seven position. Now, the pressure is really on. They have to have complete trust in me that I'm making the miss on the ground and I'm flying the profiles correctly. At an average age of 37 and 17 years of flying experience, these pilots are among the best in Canada. Flying up to 600 kilometers an hour, each only has a two-foot space in which they can make any errors. Outside of that, you put your team in great danger. Major Corey Blakely flies the inner left wing. Uh, my contract or my responsibility to all the guys flying around me is that I stay within my air box, which is a two foot by two foot air box. And uh, that's essentially the, the deal that we have uh, between each of the guys in the formation. From my position, Snowbird 3 sits, his, his tail sits five feet above my nose. And uh, I completely ignore him. 
and he trusts that I won't won't hit him. I I spend most of my time looking beside me at Snowbird 4 and ahead at Snowbird Leaf. With such sharp focus, Rolling out. there's no time to wave to the crowd, think about what's for dinner, or even wonder what time it is. Their minds are latched onto one thing. I'm just focusing on the maneuver I'm doing. There's not much room to focus on anything else. The best analogy I can give you for what, what it's like to fly formation in from my position would be rush hour traffic, say four lanes of rush hour traffic, and you, you're, you all put your foot on the gas at the exact same time, and you don't look at the guy in front of you, but you stare two feet, you drive two feet from the wheel of the guy beside you, and you trust that the guy in front of you is not gonna put on his brakes, the guy beside him isn't gonna put on his brakes, and you all try and drive at the same speed together. Coming up, the team splits up for their most challenging maneuvers. Each air show is 45 minutes long and features over 50 different maneuvers. After many graceful nine-jet formations, the team breaks up for some of the more challenging moves. Now. For the close part of the show, the solos become the daredevils of the team. Their closing speed is 1,000 kilometers an hour, and they miss each other by just a few meters. It takes skill, and it's hair-raising to watch. Captain Marc Laverdier is the opposing solo and flies under veteran lead solo, Captain Christian Delamore. These two have a lot of trust in each other. It's all eyeballs. Once I roll in, um, when I dive down, and I'm going head to head with number nine, it's just my eyeball. There's no radar in the tutor. There's no special systems. I'm just looking at him and making the miss. Mark enjoys the challenge of being one of the solos. My favorite and trickiest maneuver is the uh, mirror roll. And what the mirror roll is, is when uh, number nine rolls inverted, I fly right underneath him, and then we roll so that I'm inverted, he's right side up, and then back again so that he's inverted, I'm right side up. I plug in, I'm actually looking straight up to the top of my canopy, and our canopy, our wings are perfectly matched. I'm right below him when our T-tails are only a matter of feet apart. And uh, it's a lot of fun. It's definitely one of the most challenging maneuvers I've, I've done in my aviation career, from flying full planes to flying fighters doing this. It's definitely uh, one with the least room for air. Everyone on the team has their personal favorites. One of them is my favorite is uh, the Vulcan uh, bottom side. And uh, I like it just because I'm way out on the outside and I go from needing full power to almost no power in that whole maneuver. So it's, uh, it's just such a big formation and when the crowd sees it, it looks like we're all tied together on a string. So I, I, I like how graceful that is. I really like the downward split. I love the profile when I'm floating up in the air and we have this almost weightless feeling just before I, I tip the airplane is over and point straight down and before calling that snowbird split now. And uh, it gives me a little bit of goosebumps every time I do it. I, I really like flying that maneuver. During the show, the pilots become drenched in sweat. The stresses of gravity and acceleration take a hard toll on the body. It's just like going to the gym for an hour and having a good, a good cardiovascular workout. I come down and pretty much soaked in sweat. During their show, pilots experience between positive six and negative two G. Positive G gives the sensation of weight increase, where negative G makes you feel lighter. We all stand under 1G as we're standing here uh, today. 
Uh, it's just a, uh, the increase in G, 4G would basically uh, multiply your weight times 4. Uh, so everything you have on your head and on your body uh, multiplies its weight, weight times 4 at that time. So it's a bit like an elephant standing on your shoulders at the bottom of it every, uh, every loop. The pilots have to flex their muscles constantly so they don't pass out. Basically just flex all your muscles to prevent the blood from pooling your lower extremities and therefore preventing you from blacking out. Um, it's, it's good, it's, uh, it's a good thing. Their practice show is going well. But even if everything is perfect, something random like a bird in an engine can be catastrophic. The pilots are aware of the dangers of the job, but don't dwell on the subject. Uh, it's a risky job. There's an elevated level of risk. And we like to take those risks smartly. We like to, to approach it in a heads-up way and mitigate the risks and minimize them as, as much as possible. If there's something that, that we deem is, is not safe, or is, uh, that the risk level is too high, we'll just won't do it that day or we won't do it at all. I think uh, the key for us is to mitigate that risk and everything we do has uh, that filter of safety put to it prior to flying it. And in some cases, some of the things that look dangerous out there are in fact visual illusions and we they look more dangerous than they probably are because that ultimately as I've said is, uh, is very key for us is to make the show safe for ourselves but more so for the for the people watching the show. On behalf of the commanding officer and all team members of 431 Air Demonstration Squadron we thank you very much and hope you have enjoyed today's performance. Another practice show is a success. The first thing the pilots do when they get out of their jets is shake their technician's hand. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, show, boss. Yes, Worked out. Then they shake each other's hands. That's a camaraderie thing, it's also a tradition thing, but you know, uh, it's just a real attaboy at the end of a, a, a flight. You know, we look at each other in the eye and say, you know what, good job, thanks for, uh, thanks for looking after me is what it comes down to. The pilots and ground crew go over any mechanical concerns immediately. Today, there are none. All right, we all here? Okay, let's go, serviceability. Two green. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one. Good job. Okay, well that was a lot of fun flying over the water, but uh, also today with those uh, that black calm water that was uh, eye-opening as well. So. The overwing briefing is basically at the end we get uh, together with our technicians. We only get to fly because they they prepare our planes for us and keep them in such great shape. So uh, we want to make sure everybody's in loop and we we approach everything as a team. Techs will spend hours with the jets, and depending on the show, pilots will spend hours in debrief. How was the roll? They go over their show with a fine tooth comb. That was, uh, that was a lot of work out there. I think it was a really good show though. I think uh, the timings were, were fairly accurate and I know that was for myself some of the toughest aviation I've had to experience in 16 years. Heard that conversation about the... The debrief is an open forum for pointing out errors with 11 strong and different personalities criticizing each other. It's surprising the room stays calm. But they're all driven by the challenge to put on the perfect show. As far as self-critiquing, I, I know when I make a mistake. I, I know if I'm out of position and I just can't accept being there. I just can't say to myself, okay, that's good enough. Good enough can, it cannot be part of it at all. So it's good. We've already received a few uh, comments to the fact that the show was looked good, and uh, we'll go through the tape and see where we can find our areas of improvement and tweak this even more. After they critique themselves from the sky, they critique themselves from the audience's perspective. Every show is videotaped for analysis. They're constantly pushing themselves. Time seeing through the sun. Striving for the best. That's that's the beauty of uh, this job is that uh, 
you can always strive for perfection that can never be achieved. And uh, the day the day you've flown the perfect show as a snowbird is probably the day you need to retire because you're probably not uh, being critical enough with yourself. It's near the end of their stay in Comox. The snowbirds put on an unofficial air show to thank the townspeople for their support. Fans line the boardwalk. Today, there's someone special in the audience. Mike's parents have traveled from the mainland to watch the show. It is it's certainly more special when I have relatives or friends in the crowd. At the same time, we prepare for every show the exact same as if it was a practice. So it's not like I go up there thinking, man, I really got to nail this because my mom's watching this show or something like that. No, actually, my mom watches the show like this, so. The Frenches watch their son perform any chance they get. This is the first one this year, and we saw about four last year and five the year before, and I really can't breathe the first, the first few, and you'll see that. You, you would have seen that uh, after watching him. I calmed down, but I can't believe it's him up there, and they're so close. <laughs> no, we're extremely proud of him. It's, a, it's an accomplishment for any pilot. To, to, this is kind of the zenith of of flying as far as I'm concerned. Straight ahead as the team adopts the maple formation in preparation for the magnificent maple split. The team is only weeks away from the beginning of their show season. After half a year of intense training, they're excited to get started. Are we ready? Uh, yes, we are. You know, certainly I think what, what, what you saw today uh, in our practice shows that we're ready to go out. I am extremely pumped to hit the road. In fact, I think about it uh, almost every waking hour while we're out here and focused on this training season. When we get out on the road, then we get to fly. All we're doing is flying and meeting the, meeting the public, traveling all over North America and really getting out to see, uh, see the public. And that's, uh, there's no better job in the world. There are inherent risks to flying, no matter how much effort is put into safety. And accidents do happen. One month later, tragedy strikes the team. The team was practicing one last time before their first air show of the season. For reasons still unknown, Captain Sean Makahi's jet crashes. He becomes the sixth pilot to die in a plane crash in the squadron's 37-year history. The team loses a dear friend and a great pilot. The loss is devastating. The Snowbirds are five weeks into their show season. But this is one of their first show locations. After taking time out of the show season to grieve the loss of a fellow pilot, the team is now back in the air. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise if you are able and join us in a tribute to our fallen comrade, Snowbird 2, Captain Sean McCaughey, to whom we are dedicating the entire 2007 show season. Sean is a very important person to us and his memory is a very important part of this show. And we've dedicated the one maneuver specifically in the show to Sean and where we, we have the number two smoking as we fly by with the engines uh, spooled back a bit so it's quiet. But we also have dedicated the whole season to his honor as well. And that's very important for people. And I think it was an important milestone for the team to dedicate a maneuver in the season so that we could carry on and do the rest of the season. Captain Paul Couillard, a former Snowbird 2 pilot, rejoins the team, flying in the Snowbird 2 position for the rest of the season. In part of the, the ability for us to go on in this season was the fact that we know Sean would want us to go on. And I can say that for most people as well. That's a sentiment of many aviators that 
you would want the show to go on and that's comforting to the members of the team and to me specifically and we we do keep that uh, we hold that dear the team misses him a whole bunch and uh, we've gone on and uh, in his honor the team has a busy show season ahead of them they have 41 air shows and fly pass to do before they return to moose jaw in october when the snowbirds head to each show site, the team arrives in waves. The first wave takes care of business. Two hours later, the rest of the pilots and techs arrive. From the moment they step out of their jets, they're busy. Welcome to Kingston. Uh, tomorrow is a show day. Brief is at 16:15 for an 1800 smoke on. Our briefing room is Central Airways, which is the SO, which is just itself. The public relations part of their job begins. They have no idea what awaits them until they land. Well, we fly into a new show site. Uh, the coordinators are already there beforehand. Our public affairs officer gets in there. They get air about two hours before us. And they have everything set up. So when we show up, it's very much, uh, we really don't know what's going on. And, you know, you can go from uh, all of a sudden finding out that you're doing a, a school or hospital visit to, hey, and next thing you know, you're, 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 sitting, down, uh, you're sitting down doing a photo shoot for a billboard with a seatbelt uh, ad on. So, uh, you know, that was, I, got, I got a little uh, taken back by that. It was good. When we're at a show site, that's part of the that's part of the deal. We come in, we fly the show, and uh, that's the the bulk of uh, our our job. But afterwards, we uh, also attend functions with, within the community to uh, get the word out there about uh, the Canadian Forces and and the jobs and the exciting careers that we have. For every air show site, the team is scheduled for appearances. Sometimes it's enjoying cocktails with supporters and fans. Other times, it involves brightening some people's days. Money raised with the help of air shows helped build this hospital. Well, I think uh, in general we, we work to inspire uh, your average Canadian. Uh, but when we come into a hospital where people aren't able to get outside and, and, uh, and see our shows, it, I think it, it goes that extra mile where they're, uh, they're really, uh, we feel like we're touching them and, and helping them maybe to, to inspire them to, to get better. Not only are they instrumental in helping out communities and recruiting for the military, they are also in the inspiration business. Who can tell me what a goal is? What is a goal? Well, basically, I hope that they will stay in school and to know that you can't just, uh, if you want to achieve your dream, it doesn't come easy, that there's a lot of hard work, hard work that's involved in that. Once you actually achieve it, you can sit back and go, no, I did it. I actually did it. And it's a wonderful feeling. And it just encourages you to set more goals and to keep achieving them. So here, who here rides a bicycle? Who here rides a bike? Awesome. Who here wears a, a helmet while you're riding a bike? That is great. The Snowbirds are ambassadors of a program called Smart Risk. Smart Risk is, uh, is a, uh, a group of people that we are very proud to be associated with and uh, the message that they stand for of telling children to you know, take risks in life, to have fun, but to do it wisely. Because of his line of work, Mark feels it's an important message to send to kids. There is you know, some risk inherently involved in what we do, but you know, we wear the proper gear, we train very hard, everything that we do is definitely thought out, uh, planned, talked about afterwards, and so we learn from our mistakes, but we do it in a safe uh, manner. So I think it's important for the kids to, to be able to, to see that. Well, I want to thank you for your time. You guys have been a great audience. You guys have been it turns out, some of their inspiration rubbed off on the students. Like if you put your mind to it, you can do practically anything you want. They were talking about how women can follow their dreams and how they can make a difference. When no matter what anyone says, you should always follow your dreams. And, and um, that's what my parents always say, and they, this has um, encouraged me a lot more than others. 
Coming up, the team performs in front of 15,000 fans. Air shows are one of North America's favorite pastimes. Often the event is like a festival, with many aerobatic performers from all over the continent. But for their next show, the Snowbirds are the only act. Their next show is in Kingston, Ontario. The terrain challenges their training in Comox, flying over water. But today, the water isn't the issue, the smog is. The haze limits the, the horizon, and many of the maneuvers that we do, we use the horizon as our reference. So one can be tricked into uh, rolling cues and, and other visual perceptions without a, a very accurate horizon. An estimated 15,000 people gather to watch the show including the family of one of the pilots. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, both I have twin three-year-olds and uh, we have these little uh, snowbird flight suits that we had made for them. So it's kind of cool to have them down on the ground knowing that they're watching me. People come to air shows for different reasons. For many people, air shows are a family tradition. Yeah, well, my mom and dad would bring myself and my sister, and yeah, so I guess your mom and dad did the same That's thing. That's right, so now we're carrying it on with Abby. Oh, just that it's worth coming to see. Snowbirds are a great, put on a great performance, and it's just, it's really worth coming to see. I come out to support the, the troops and the guys because I know they're putting in a solid effort and they're really giving it. And the precision flying is awesome. It's a lot of fun to watch. Plus I've been coming since I was a kid. It's a nice family event. It's fun and uh, you feel patriotic when you watch it. One of the best compliments I think uh, that we get from our fans is that they say that you, you make us proud to be Canadian. And I mean, there can't, there's nothing, nothing better than that. They tour the country like rock stars and spend a lot of time together on the road. The team has fun during their show season. Although rewarding, life on the road can be lonely. Many have loved ones they rarely get to see. Living your dreams often comes with sacrifices. Do you think you can handle that, Callum, going into grade one? It's going to, I know it's going to be hard. No, I know you can do it though. Uh, we really appreciate the winters where we're home with our family. That, that's nice, but uh, the summers are tough. Okay, I love you. Bye-bye. So this is packing time for us. See? With another successful show site under their belts, it's time to move on. I don't have my trombone with me today. It's trunk to side hatch. For their six month tour, they live out of their jets, literally. It's a giant road trip with no trunk space. The secret is the triple fold. Boss is lucky because there's more room on the other side. For some of the pilots, this is their last year of snowbird glory. They will move on to fill other positions within the Air Force. There, there, there's, there's no doubt this is, a, this is a career highlight for me to be a member of the Snowbirds. It's the greatest job in the world. Uh, you know, the flying is outstanding, but uh, there's so, many, there's so much more to this job, the, uh, the travel, the connection with Canadians. The team is on the road again. 
proud to fly Canada's colors. Proud to display the military's professionalism. And proud to be role models and icons. They are one of the most watched shows in North America. The Canadian Forces Snowbirds.